Welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. AHOP TV empowers believers with spirit-inspired messages and strategic equipping that accelerates your spiritual growth. You can subscribe to stream weekly content from Awakening House of Prayer, conferences, and other exclusive content to stir your hunger and encourage your heart. Visit us online at ahop.tv. Well, I want to bring you a... um a message, a lesson, a conversation on treasures revealed. My theme scripture for us today comes from Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. And by the way, these are the words of Jesus. Matthew thirteen fifty-two, And Jesus said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple, don't you love that word? It isn't being a follower. It isn't being a fan. It is being a disciple. Therefore, every scribe, a teacher, an instructor who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who, now listen to this real, real close, who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Now, I have taught on this scripture around the world, and sometimes I do a survey. I might read the scripture, and then I ask the people, now what treasures, what are we supposed to do with treasures? And I tell people that, hey, you are a treasure chest. Your heart is the treasure chest, and you're supposed to store up treasures, and what are we supposed to do with them? Well, you know, some people have hope chest or treasure chest, and then they just store it up. But what this says is that a wise steward brings forth treasures. So it's not only treasures revealed, it's also treasures released for the sake of others. And so every time I do a survey on this, and I ask people questions about like this verse, and what kind of treasures are we supposed to bring out? Everybody, every time, everywhere always says treasures old and new, and it's not what it says. And I read this verse for years, new and old, and I interpret it also as old and new. So you go, well, aren't you splitting a hair? No, not at all, because there is a revelatory, treasures revealed, there is a revelatory dimension to the order of the words, and it says this, who brings forth treasures new and old. Why? You see, I have got, like you, I have got enough treasures stored up from the past, old treasures, that I could just live on the treasures from the past. And that's what a lot of people do in church history. Whole denominations live on old treasures. They're awesome, but they're living in the past. And that's why Jesus says a wise steward brings forth treasures new and old. And it's because For new treasures, that means you have an ongoing, vibrant relationship with God and Him with you, and it's great to have a reputation of the past, but how much better is it to have the past, but every day it is new. So with that in mind, I'm going to share some of my treasures revealed to be treasures released for you 
And because of the order, treasures new and old, I'm going to tell you a new one first. Just this last Sunday morning, I had a series of three dreams. I would wake up out of each dream, and it would just stick with me. And so here's one of the, it's the third dream that I had just this last Sunday. So this is a new treasure. In this dream, there's a platform that is set. But sometimes you just have knowings. And that's kind of the way I operate. I operate out of knowings, and I operate in feeling the atmosphere. And I'm very attuned to the emotion of the God experience, the God encounter. So, in the dream, there is a platform, a stage. I'm invited up to the platform. And I am weaving my way through crowds of people. My knower knows that these people represent different periods of my life. And they were also different movements of the Holy Spirit. Part of the reason I could know was because of the different periods of time, the way people were dressed. And I remember being on the stage and passing through the Jesus people movement. Because why? Because they were dressed funky, man. I mean, with braids in their hair and, you know, and bell-bottom jeans and the whole bit. And by the way, I had some too. Anyway, and then it kept progressing, and I kept having to press through. I kept having to press through the crowd because I wasn't content to live in yesterday's move only. And I kept having to press through the good to get to the now. And I kept walking through the crowds, weaving almost like a salmon swimming upstream, going cross current through a move to the next one, to the 70s, to the 80s, to the third wave, to the prophetic movement. And I was reliving people and all of this. It was amazing. But I was having to what? Press through. At a distance, I saw one of the most influential people in my life, Derek Prince, the prince of teachers of the charismatic movement, a scholar of scholars. And Derek Prince, I saw him at a distance, and I just knew I wanted to get where he was. I know I'm not called to be the level of teacher at all that Derek Prince as a teacher of teachers, but I have been called as a prophetic teacher, which is a different type. But I'm having to press through movements. I'm having to press through people. I could have stopped, so I call this dream pressing through. And I hit a resistance, and I just felt like I, I felt like I was stuck. Have any of you ever felt like you've been stuck? And I felt stuck, and I was trying to still press through. And then the man of God made his way towards me. And he came towards me. And Derek Prince would have been a symbolic representation for me of God the Father. And yet Derek Prince, being one of my major influencers, comes towards me. I'm pressing through, and yet my father is pressing through to meet me where I was. And then, all of a sudden, it seemed, it shifts. And now Derek Prince is standing right in front of me, and in his British scholarly English, he says to me, that was then. It spoke volumes to me. And he's talking about the different moves of God. He says, that was then, and now it's present. He goes, that was then, this is now, this is us. Oh my gosh, I woke up out of that dream, the presence of God riveting on me. That was then, this is now, this is us spoke so much to me. It spoke to me about the need to be a part of the family of God. This is us. It spoke to me about the honor of being a steward 
a wise steward of the past old treasures. But it said, that was then. This is now. Do you know in Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter, it says, now faith is. It doesn't say, and faith was. It says, now faith is. Derek Prince said to me in a dream, this is then. That was then. This is now. And then I get this other word. This is us. Now, folks, I know that that is the title of a popular television show. And I learned television is telling a vision. This is us. It's not about one person. It's about the joining of the generations. This is us. It doesn't say, this is me. It didn't say, this is I. This is us. And the current move of God is not about one or two great men or women of God. It's about us. It's about the joining of the generations. It's about picking up the baton. It's not about living in the past. It's about being present and postured for from the past present to the present future. This is us. Well, that spoke a lot to me because a name of a church that I have been attending for the last around four years is called The Belonging. And it was the fifth anniversary, Grace, of The Belonging. And I went to go participate, not just observe, in the celebration. And I had a word on me. This is us. Do you realize that some of us can feel like we're observers only and you're not a participant? And all you get to do is observe what other people are doing. And part of that is a choice of the heart. Will you enter in from out of the best of the past, press through the crowd, be present? This is that was then, this is now, and this is us. And I just want to say to all of us, out of treasures revealed, treasures new, God has the best for now. And the best is not in the past. The best is present future in Jesus' name. And so then how about an old treasure? Well, I remember I had a dream right before I went to Bangkok, Thailand to minister. And in the dream, the dream was about breaking curses off of people's lives, powers of darkness. So I, and the end of the dream was different, though, because at the end of the dream, instead of dressing directly the powers of darkness and saying, I rebuke that curse, which I'm not saying that's wrong. But in the dream, I moved in the opposite spirit and I started releasing proclamations of the power of the blessing. And I go, I wake up from the dream and I go, that's amazing. I was moving in the opposite spirit, which is a tool of spiritual warfare. And in the dream, and when I released the power of the blessing, Romans 12 lit up inside of me that the power of the blessing is greater than the power of the curse. So I went to Thailand with that in my heart and mind. I taught at a spirit-filled Anglican church in a systematic way on curses causes, curses cured. For two days, I did this. Then at the end, I went into a ministry time. And instead of laying hands on people, and instead of warfare in addressing of the curse in Thailand with Buddhism and all of the shrines, instead, I started just releasing the power of the blessing and proclamation. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord Rapha, the Lord who heals. Oh, it was fascinating because it, it just went over well, but I didn't know how well. Till that night, the open meetings were held at the public YMCA. There was worship, and then there was this one lady, and she started dancing in the front of everybody, and everybody's getting real excited and happy, and I'm going like, yeah, well, cool, right, this older lady's dancing. 
wonderful, but I know that there's something else going on, but I don't know what it is. So I turned to my interpreter and I said, what's going on? He says, you mean you don't know? He says, no. When you release the power of the blessing that afternoon, an electric presence of God, the power of God, hits this woman's body. No one laid hands on her. It was the power of the blessing. And her whole left side of her body was paralyzed. She had spent all the money she had on doctors. She was that next week going to have an, a, a last MRI type thing done to see about some other last procedure or something that could be done for her paralysis condition. And in a moment of God's power, under the power of the blessing, she's now that night dancing in front of everybody because why? The power and the presence of God and the power of the proclamation is greater than the power of the curse. And she was instantly healed. And that's why she was dancing in gratitude and thanksgiving before the whole conference gathering that night. And that's why everybody was so excited. Well, that's an old treasure. Isn't it good? And as you retell these testimonies, remember, there is power for these testimonies to have effect today. So let's go into a third section of ministry time now out of these what? Treasures revealed, new and old. So let's take the new one first. I speak over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that God sees your pressing through. And I speak to those who feel stuck in yesterday's move or the cost of being apart was so intense that you have felt stuck or you just don't know if you want to keep moving forward because you know the cost that there was to be involved in a move of the Spirit in the past. But I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I see like a Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit crowbar coming after you, and he's going to help pry you loose. I speak this over some of you, and you just, someone even said today before you're hearing this podcast, I feel stuck. God, someone, I hear your, I even hear prayers before the Lord. I feel stuck. God, help me. I don't want to be stuck in my walk with you, and I don't want to be stuck in yesterday. And I feel the Holy Spirit's heard that cry, and he's coming like with a crowbar to help loose you, and it's going to deal with healing of memory. And I speak right now mental health healings. I speak into healings of trauma because of the cost of yesterday's move has left a scar in your memories, and therefore then you have a hindrance to moving to the future. And so I speak healing over being stuck. And I say some of you are going to get freedom, liberty, salvation, a sozo, you're going to have freedom from being stuck. And there's also, again, trauma healing that's happening in emotions. Because some of you, you have recurring thoughts, recurring memories, and with every memory, there's a stored emotion. So I speak to the emotion in the stored emotion, and I simply say to those emotions, be healed. I speak peace to those emotions, that those emotions from the past stored memory will not overrule your faith and become the dictator. So I say to those, because I see it right now, I hear it, I hear this emotion rising up, the stored memory with the emotion, and it's going, ah, I don't know, ah, and it's actually fear. So I do Move in the opposite spirit of fear, and I bless you with faith. Faith to move forward. I bless you right now with supernatural measure and gift and sphere of faith. And I declare to you, just because the other had a great cost, it doesn't mean that the next is going to have the same old level of pain. No way, no way, no way. The next will have 
conditions that must be met. But I tell you, it doesn't have to come with pain. No, it doesn't. In fact, I address that ungodly stronghold right now. And I say to that ungodly stronghold, you do not have authority to rule and to keep us or keep people stuck in the memories of yesterday in Jesus name. Well, let me go then to which I already tipped over into it in ministry and the power of the blessing out of the old revelation, the old treasure revealed. And so here it is. I release the power of the blessing over you right now in the name of the Lord of hosts. And I speak over you. You will press through. You will press through. I speak supernatural strength, supernatural might over you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I say to those who are even paralyzed, I speak the power of the blessing is greater than the power of the curse. And I speak transformation. I speak miracles right now. I actually see someone like numb. It's like a a, a, a foot that's just like a, a, a cleft foot, but it's, but it's numb. And I just speak life to your flesh, life to your cells, life to your nerve endings, life. And I just declare feelings being turned back on. I see, again, uh, uh, chemical brain healings happening, and it's going to hit you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, and you will end up declaring, how blessed are the feet of them who bring good news. Some of you need to, somebody's getting healed of gout right now in their feet. Someone with a diabetic condition that's had some severe ramifications that I speak to the source of the kidneys that has a result of the gout in the foot. And I say, be normalized. And I say the blood sugar levels, be healed in Jesus' name. Well, I'm looking forward to getting some testimonies from this time today on treasures revealed, new and old. So, obviously, we have some questions that get sent in. So, let me try to touch a couple of questions for us. How do you get a revelation of God's love? Wow, that is a great question. I would say for years, I knew and loved Jesus, but a hard time relating to his father, because I had the older wineskin mindset of that he's harsh, that he's hard, he's a hard taskmaster. And so we have to, in having a revelation of God's love, sometimes we have to identify the hindrances that are in the pathway of wrong models that have been in our life. And now we remove ourselves from the models of harshness. We remove ourselves from the models of abuse, and we catapult ourselves into that Jesus is the exact representation of God, and God is love. So I speak in a healthy way, a severing of old models of harshness, and I help release you into new models of the Bible, of God is love. Hey, that's just a touch into that, and I know that there's many appropriate answers to how do you get a revelation of God's love. Another question that has been sent in is, God gave me a promise, but I haven't seen the outcome. What should I do? Well, one of the things that you don't do is quit. You don't quit. Sometimes there's what's called negative definition, and we have to find the negative definition to get to the positive definition. In this situation, I'm going there first. God gave me a promise, but I haven't seen the outcome. What should I do? Well, we identify the hindrances. Again, and that's a negative definition, and that's a hindrance. And so you ask God for what's the hindrance that's in the way. And then, folks, dust off your Bible. Dust off your Bible. Dust off your Bible. And building on the podcast from the week before, fresh bread, fresh revelation, the daily bread. 
I encourage you how. You got to have not faith from yesterday. To inherit the promise, it has to be now faith. And so now faith faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. So we have to cut off wrong modelings. We have to remove the hindrances, which can be fear, which can be abuse, those issues. We've got to dust off the Bible. And if it's only one scripture a day, praise the Lord, pray now the word. Pray the word. Dust off the word, read the word, now meditate the word, pray the word. And what did I start off with? Just don't quit. And also realize this, your answer might not come in the manner that you are expecting. But I can tell you this, the answer, the promise revealed is on its way. And I can tell you this because God's word says so, and God is not a liar. God never lies. And if you have bought into that, that God's a liar, just dispel that, just renounce it, and then just make a declaration, God is the God of promise, and he who promised shall also bring the manifestation, the fulfillment in Jesus' name. I know there's a lot of answers to these questions, whether they are how do you get a revelation to how you get a promise fulfilled. But those are a little bit of the insights that I have. And so I hope that today that you are able to be a wise steward, a disciple of the kingdom who brings forth treasures new and old, and I release again these two dreams I shared from the present to the past. And I declare, when you feel like that you have pressed through as far as you can, I assure you, he is making the next move. He is making the next move. He who began a good work will perfect it. And I speak this over you, that he is now moving towards you, and you can bank on that. And I declare over you, the power of the blessing is greater than the power of the curse. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this today. This is James Gall with a podcast on Treasures Revealed. And... God encounters are for everyone, and treasures, new and old, are for you. Amen, amen. Look forward to being with you again in the following weeks and episodes. This has been a production of the Awakening Podcast Network. Jennifer LeClaire is the founder and owner of APN. Our heart is to inspire people and exalt Jesus with every broadcast. We're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible.